Today we'll be taking a look at Windows Server 2019 that is currently in technical preview, um, but more, more importantly, we'll be taking a look at the system insights feature that is now available in Windows Server 2019. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, to enable system insights in Windows Server 2019, there's actually a few new roles that's available for Windows Server 2019. So you'll need to enable those roles first in order to leverage the uh, system insights capability. In addition, um, currently Windows um, Admin Center is the kind of the tool that you can use to, to look at those system insights um, that will be generated by the functionality. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we're sitting on Windows Admin Center on the Windows Admin Center console. And if you haven't already added your, if you already have a Windows Server 2019 server deployed, you will need to go through the process of adding it to your connections. So to do that, it's pretty simple. You'll just go ahead and click Add. Um, you'll go ahead and select a server connection or if it's a failover cluster or a hyperconverged cluster, you'll go ahead and select those options. In my case, mine is a server connection. So after you hit server connection, you can import from a, like a text file, or you can just go ahead and type in the name of the server. In my case, I've already um, added my server, just kind of wanted to show you what that process looks like. Um, so after you put in your server name, you'll get prompted for credentials to use on, on that server and connect to it. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. And so now what I'm going to do is go over to go ahead and connect to my 2019 server. So I have a server name W2K19-1. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I should get presented with um, overview information for that particular server. So I'm just kind of going through these steps. I've already gone through and enabled a lot of these things that I'm going to show you that needs to be turned on, but I'm just going to give you an idea of how you do that. So um, you can do it here in Windows Admin Center, or you could do it locally on the server as far as enabling the role. Um, so since Windows Admin Center is kind of the future of Windows administration, um, we'll show you the more modern, newer way to do that um, remotely. So as we're seeing here, we're kind of seeing some metrics and CPU utilization, memory utilization, um, network throughput, those type of metrics kind of streaming across in, in near real time here on the system. And then at the top, you kind of see the main um, what version of Windows is running. So in this case, it's Windows Server 2019 Data Center. And then the build number, I'm on 7, 17, 723, and how much memory, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of different details about the system. So over here on the left-hand side, we have roles and features. I'm gonna go ahead and click on roles and features. And there are quite a few new roles and features available in Windows Server 2019. But um, for, for the purpose of, of this particular video, we're focusing on uh, just a few here. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit, and uh, here we go. So you see there's this new role called System Insights, right? And there's also a System Data Archiver um, that may be interesting for you as well. But System Insights, since it's not enabled or installed by default, so if you don't currently have it installed, you can come here, you'll click the checkbox next to it, and then hit the Install button, which will go ahead and deploy that out to the system. So after that's installed on your Windows Server 2019 system, the next step is that um, you actually have to enable System Insights in Windows Admin Center. So I, I've already done that, so you see the link is already here. But in your case, if you're in your Windows Admin Center, you don't have the System Insights link. And what you need to do is click on the gearbox over here on the right-hand side. And then down here under Gateway, there's Extensions section. So in the extension section here, you, you should see System Insights uh, um, as an option there if you haven't already installed it. So you'll go ahead and click that, install it. And then after that installs, it'll appear on your main dashboard. I'm not like, as you just saw on my previous screen. So let me just go ahead and hop back over to my 2019 server and jump into the System Insights capability and take a look what what's new there. So go ahead and click on System Insights. And that'll take a few, just a few moments to, to load up. More more than a few moments. It's taking a few seconds here. All right. So um, once you enable this, um, so this feature is currently in preview. Once you enable this, you turn it on on the OS, and then you also enable it in Windows Admin Center. What will start happening is that 
um, the system will start tracking trends as far as CPU load, network load, um, storage consumption, volume consumption. It'll start tracking those things and start making forecasts and predictions on if you're going to need more capacity at some period of time and when that period of time may be based on what is seeing your system actually do. So when you initially enable this, you may actually not see anything for maybe a week um, or, or several days after you enable it um, before you start getting usable forecast data. So um, just keep that in mind. And, and how this works is once you enable it, once you enable these various different capabilities, so in this case, I'm looking at the CPU forecast capability, um, it'll, you'll start seeing these trends over time. As, as time go on, you'll see the trends of what's happening within the system as far as CPU utilization over time, and then it forecasts out if, if it thinks that you're going to run out of capacity based on what is seen over that period of time. So um, it is configurable as when you want it to run. So mine, it runs on a daily basis. Every day at 3 a.m., it goes and, and perform this forecasting and trending um, um, algorithm to determine if, if there's anything that I need to do. So uh, you see, um, mine's been running for a while. So a couple of couple days after it was running, so it kept telling me I didn't have enough recent data to make predictions. So you'll probably see that for, like I said, maybe about up to a week after you initially enable it, you probably won't see much data yet. Um, but um, after, after that, you should start seeing um, predictions and forecasts that, uh, that'll update on a daily basis. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll back up here. So the other thing you could do, if, if I go ahead and click invoke, you can kind of run that on demand. You can run the forecast capability on demand, and then once it finishes, it'll report back uh, as far as what it sees. So you can see here, I just did a, a real-time uh, on-demand run, and it is um, still still reporting good. So everything's looking good. So if you go ahead, click on over to settings. And settings is over here where you can you can kind of set up various different schedules on how frequently you want the schedule predictions to run um, daily, hourly, minute by the minute, and then days a week. Um, what what particular days, um, time of day, you can go ahead and configure all of that. Other thing you can do, you can have various different actions associated with if it detects an issue, right? So um, say if you're if it detects, hey, you're in a morning condition for CPU consumption, you can have this go out and run a script, for example. You can have it go run some type of PowerShell script um, that you've created that will go and maybe try to um, close a program that's consuming too much CPU or restart a process. Or, or whatever it may be, depending on, on what your particular needs are or um, whatever particular action you typically do to remediate that type of issue. So you have a lot of different uh, options. So um, um, you can have various different um, actions depending on what state it returns back in. And then um, you can provide the credentials to run that particular script. Um, in my case, I don't have any of that currently configured, uh, but this, this is the area where you go and do that. So. Um, on each one of these, you'll see there's an informational button. So if you hover over that, it just kind of gives you, so, hey, that's by the password executable that will be invoked when the capability returns an OK status or a warning or action or error or, or whatever the status it gets. All right, so that is the CPU forecasting. And for network capacity, total storage consumption, value consumption, it'll be pretty much the same concept where you'll need to go ahead and enable the capability. It'll look at that trends over a period of time, um, initially before it starts actually doing anything. And then once that kicks off, it'll, it can do that on a daily basis and, and provide you feedback and, and insights on that. So hopefully this has been useful for you um, to kind of get an idea of some of the new capabilities that's coming in Windows Server 2019 as far as system insights.